Warm greetings from the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Friday, May 8, 2020. I want to dedicate this video to a young man by the name of Ahmad Arbery, 25 years of age, of Brunswick, Georgia, outside Brunswick, Georgia. He was gunned down in February by two Caucasian men for the sole reason because they could. And we will get justice for you, Mr. Aubrey, and justice for your parents and family. And I want your parents to know, I will stay on this case till the very end. Till the very end. And the news I'm going to bring you all in the said article is not the best news it's probably the expected news under the circumstances, but it is what it is. Travis Moss, my friend from college, this video is also for you because you have been raising hell on Facebook about this case, and we're going to ride or die for Mr. Aubrey on this one. This is for you, too, Mr. Travis Moss. If you need verification for the storyline, log on to the Washington Post. And this was updated at 12.04 today. Father and son charged in the killing of black Georgia jogger Ahmad Arbery after footage sparked outrage. State law enforcement officials says there is no plan to investigate local authorities who failed to make arrests in the February shooting. And why are we not surprised about that? A Georgia Bureau of Investigation official said Friday that there's no plan to investigate the local prosecutors and law enforcement agencies that failed to arrest or file charges against suspects in the fatal shooting of a black jogger in February. The state agency arrested Gregory McMichael, 64, and his son, Travis McMichael, 34, and charged them with murder and aggravated assault. Thursday evening, more than two months after 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery was killed. And that is the short article from the Washington Post, if you need verification for the storyline. Let me say this. Are we actually stunned as African Americans and possibly some other races that there will be no investigation? Because I'm reading this to you verbatim. State law enforcement official says there is no plan to investigate local authorities who failed to make an arrest in the February shooting. And that is a blow right there. And that is why I made the comment I made in my video last night is that we now have to wait on a grand jury indictment in order to bring the two to court. And see, now that a state official has let the news know and the public know that they will not be investigating anyone pertaining to the case. See, that's a ball drop right there. Disrespect to the dead right there. Disrespect to anyone who has been gunned down for no reason. Only reason is because they could. And that's my opinion and that's my take on the storyline. It's that these two white men, father and son, gunned down Mr. Aubrey because they could. Wasn't no corona fever. Wasn't no I'm cooped up fever. It was, hey, I got this. I'm going to do this. And they did that. Okay? And it's foul and it's rank. And it is bad enough Let, let me let me say this before I even get crunk. I saw on a Facebook post today, Travis Moss, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I'm going give to you, give you your 15 minutes of fame as well, baby, because you sure enough deserve it. Because I like you. You're a really nice young man. That Facebook post you put up showing the father and son on a Facebook group. Yes, America, some idiot, nutbag, scumbag, lowlife has decided to put up a Facebook page. 
a private group to aid, help, and support for this father and son duo that gunned down Mr. Aubrey. They have 900 something members so far, almost a thousand, maybe more at this point. But am I shocked? Should we be shocked? Of course not. And then they have the nerve to have up above the picture of the father and son looking like two rednecks, two ugly ducks out of water. Christians against Google. Now, what the hell did Google do to you all? But didn't we say that? Haven't I seen that all morning in Facebook posts? Always to Christians, so-called Christians, that is. They talk about God and Jesus and Noah and Job, but they're always the ones running up, shooting people. I always want to stand their ground. I always mistaking somebody for robbing somebody. They look suspicious, and that person always happens to be an African-American. So it seems. So it seems. Always that dirty Christian. Yeah, I'm saying it. Always the Bible thumper that hollers about this and that and always radical and always wanting to be a protester. Yeah, I'm saying it. Because this is what I keep telling my fellow African-Americans. That is the same so-called Christian that stole the black man and woman from Africa and brought them here and sold them and enslaved them for hard labor, no fee, no money, raped the women and girls, impregnated them. Yeah, queen going there today. All in the name of Jesus. All in the name of the Bible. All in the name of Christianity. Those same people. And you fast forward 2020, you still got that same mentality of man and woman, children too. Their Bible thump and use Jesus and God as a crutch to have a radical mind, radical attitude, radical disposition, and spew hate and venom at African-American people, Hispanics, Jews, Muslims, Indians, Native Americans, anybody that, that don't fit the profile of a white European. Shut your mouth. Let me tell you something. I don't care nothing about your nasty Facebook group. And yes, we would suspect you would get some members because there are people walking around who think like Mr. McMichael and his son. You see, the spawn was the one who went after Mr. Aubrey. Should we be surprised? Because he was taught to hate, to have a radical mind, to jump the gun without thinking. And then in tow, they got their funky friend neighbor to fall in behind and film. Your ass is guilty too. You're guilty too. Mr. I want to be a videographer. And then what did you do? You handed over to somebody that somebody that handed over to the state's attorney's office. How noble of you. But your ass need to go down too. I'm not playing today. Queen is livid. I hate these type of stories. I try not to dwell on ignorant people. I try not to dwell on buffoonery. And it is bad enough that African-Americans harm African-Americans on the daily, on the grind. We're killing each other for no reason. We're hating on each other for no reason. We're spiteful and vengeful to each other for no reason. Wake up mad. Go to bed mad for no reason on our own race. And here comes the lily white nasty attitude saying I'm still here. I don't like you. We don't want you here. And I'll kill you. It is by the grace of God that I have some type of sense about myself because I could easily go ham 
on some buffoonery myself. Because I know what it's like to have somebody white cause me strife and problems. I've already dealt with it. I've already dealt with it. Nasty landlords letting some white trash call me nigger. Yes, the queen speaks on the truth. And I've told many of you that. I don't bring you no hypotheses on this channel. If I tell you about something, if I speak on something, it ain't because I ain't got nothing better to do. Nine times out of ten, my opinions come from experience. What I see, what I hear, what I've lived around. And I, I, I have already said the next time a white person call me nigger, there's going to be some smoke in the city. And that's the Christian side of me talking. Because I don't have to put up with it and I don't have to take it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, you can hide behind a cell phone on these Facebook pages and chat groups and news break apps calling me and other people nigger for our comment. But I'd be damned if I'm going to let a two-legged creature walk up to the queen and call me a nigger. No, ma'am. And yes, it's just a word. But it's the word that the white man gave the black man. And it's a nasty word. And we're taught not to get upset over words because that's in the end, that's all they are. But there comes a time when people need to know their place and know their lane. And walking around, calling people nasty names, profiling people, whether you're a civilian or you are an authority figure, police, sheriff, TBI, DEA, FBI, CIA, whomever you are, everybody is not the same. Everybody is not the same. I'm appalled by this behavior. I'm appalled that this young man was snuffed out at 25 because you see the demographics say he had a better chance of being shot by another black man and not make it to his 25th birthday. That has always been the synopsis here in America. That's statistically been said, that the average black man will do good to live to be 25 years of age in America if he is living in an urban environment. And I take it that he lived in a home, a house. I'm not there down there to see what type of neighborhood it is. I've yet to hear what type of environment it is. But due to the fact that Donald Duck and his son come running out, I'd say it was a half and half neighborhood, okay neighborhood. You cannot exact revenge on people and you don't have no proof of nothing. I can assume what I want about anybody where I live, but I need to be factual before I go make an accusation against that said person, whether they are black, whether they are white. And we as African-Americans need to stick together. We need to stop hating on one another. We need to stop harming one another. We need to stop the violence in our own communities. We need to stop exacting violence against others in other communities. We need to have more pride and self-respect about ourselves and deem ourselves as, ourselves as worthy of life, sustaining life, preserving life. So when we say that redneck trash taught his son to hate, well, possibly somebody black had the same mentality toward their children. And they grow up to hate people, hate their own, harm their own. Tit for tat. It's the same game. Just a different color. There's no love in the world. And I'm pissed off. And I hate talking about these types of subjects. Because I don't like dwelling on racism. Because I don't live my life like that. That's not my code 
to walk around hating people because they are white, because they are Indian, because they're Arab, because they're whatever. I don't get down like that. I don't care anything about an Arab living beside me, above me, around me, across the street. I don't care about a Jew buying a house around the corner. That's not my type of hype. That ain't my bag. Because, see, I like myself too much to waste my time worrying about somebody living next door to me, across the street from me. Getting upset because four or five white people bought a house in a black neighborhood. What the hell do I care? What the hell do I care? Why would I waste my breath on that? I see it every day. White folks worrying about a preschool being in a black neighborhood. Why you give a damn? Your child going to school to learn. And you know damn well, nobody's going to do anything to your children in that school. See, ignorant behavior, ignorant mentality. And it's going to keep going on until the black man and woman decide to rise up and clown or God takes us out first, which and so ever. But we can no longer allow racist white people, racist nationalities to continue to profile us mistreat us, belittle us, stereotype us, profile us, and kill us. It's got to stop. Mr. McMichael, you and your son are hideous. And I pray that the grand jury brings back an indictment for murder and aggravated assault and your friend needs to also be indicted who filmed the attack on Mr. Arbery. And I still believe the district attorney who was working the case, he or she needs they ass strung up too. I don't care. I know all about Georgia. I know you got old southern laws and ways down there. You are definitely the dirty South, show sure enough. You don't mind putting somebody down in the penitentiary for minor crimes, minor charges. You'll send a child, African-American child to prison, damn near life for statutory rape. Now whether the girl consented up, back and forth, arguing who said what, who did what, Two young people having sexual intercourse. And this young man is key thrown away on his life. That's how y'all get down in Georgia. It's going to stop. Or there will be hell to pay. Because you see, you cannot keep putting your foot on someone's neck and think that eventually they're not going to rear up. Buck up. It will happen. And it will be a sad day in America if the African-American people, Hispanic people, other races decide we're no longer going to stand by and let racist white people bring us down or other racist nationalities bring us down and keep killing us. And that goes for law officials as well. You all are gun happy too. We sure won't leave your tails out. Enough of this. We are people. We are human. We are all of the flesh. And that's about it. Ain't one better than the other one. Not one. Mr. Arbery, God rest your soul. My condolences and prayers to your family, your parents. Prayers to them as they grieve for the loss of their child. And I want you to know that on this channel, you will get all respect for your child. Travis Moss, I love you. Thanks for the Facebook post. Keep them coming. And we're going to keep Mr. Aubrey's name out there in the world to let people know that 
Black lives do matter. All lives matter. And we are no longer going to continue to be a sitting duck for some mad person to come along and snuff us out. Like, share, subscribe, drop your comments below. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. Love you, James, my brother. Hope you're well. We'll be calling you here shortly. This is Everyday Shenanigans. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. Glove up. Mask up. Stay safe. Stay safe, America. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.